What's up everybody, my name is Phosphorus and I welcome you to the patch 9.1 Kyrian Arcane Mage Guide. This guide is going to cover legendaries, soulbinds, conduits, talents, stats, and rotations, so let's get right into it. Alright, so when it comes to playing Kyrian Arcane Mage, the best and only legendary you should be playing is going to be Arcane Harmony. This is going to be the best legendary for both single target and AoE situations, and you'll notice a recurring theme with Kyrian Arcane in that we're doing everything we can to funnel as many damage multipliers as possible into Arcane Barrage. That's exactly what this legendary does, so you'll want to pick up some Grimveld Mittens and craft it with Critical Strike and Mastery. For our Soulbinds, we want to be taking Pelagos in all content, whether that's Raid or Mythic Plus. And for our Conduits, we want to be taking Ire of the Ascended, Magi's Brand, and Arcane Prodigy. For your Endurance and Finesse Conduits, it's mostly just preference, though I recommend that least flow of time for your Finesse Conduit. Moving on to Talents, there's not much variety at all in what you take. These are the Talents you'll be using for both Raid and Mythic Plus, and it'll pretty much never deviate from this. The one exception is that if you're swapping over to Arcane from Fire or Frost, you can take Shimmer to ease into the transition. But I'd still recommend swapping to Slipstream as soon as possible because the worst thing that can happen is needing to pop evocation and having it get cancelled due to movement. Now let's talk about stats. These are more or less the stat allocations that I would recommend. Since a lot of our damage is bursty and compressed into an 8 second window, we need a decent amount of crit to ensure that we can maximize the damage done in that window. You'll notice that the difference between an arcane mage that crits and one that doesn't is massive and it has a lot of variance in DPS between pulls. This is why you'll see a lot of arcane mages running soul letting ruby as it can give you a total of 40-50% to crit in your most important burn windows. If you don't have this trinket I recommend you farm theater of pain until you do because it'll be well worth it. As for haste, this is a stat that you'll be playing around with yourself to see what feels right for you. The less haste you have, the closer you need to be to your target so that Arcane Barrage has enough time to travel and hit the target while it's still debuffed with Touch of the Magi. Keep in mind you'll always have to sacrifice some amount of DPS based on how much haste you want in your build. 8% is the bare minimum for the build and it's also what raid bots will make gearing decisions around. However, I find 12% to be more effective in practice. There's a weak R that I'll link down in the description which will take into consideration your current haste value and calculate that range breakpoint for you, so all you have to do is make sure the weak R says you're in range and then you can start burning. You'll also want a decent amount of mastery to complement the rest of your stats. Mastery is a great stat not only because it increases the damage of our spells, but it gives us mana regen and it also increases our maximum mana. You want to strike a good balance between haste and mastery such that you won't run out of mana while evocations on cooldown. If you can pick up an Unbound Changeling from Mist of Tyrannus Scythe, you can eat Mastery food, and the random procs of Mastery will be perfect in making sure you don't run out of mana even with 12% haste. So to recap, you should always sim your character and make gearing decisions based on the sim, but a great balance that I've found works for me is 24% crit with a Soul Letting Ruby, 12% haste, and 30% Mastery with Mastery proccing on an Unbound Changeling. Now. There's a few things I need to clear up before we head into the single target portion of this video. Kyrian Arcane has a very ebb and flow style to its damage pattern. About every 45 seconds you'll have a big burn with arcane power, followed by a period of low filler damage, into a mini burn, followed by another period of low filler damage, and then the cycle repeats. So now I'm going to start explaining the rotation for the burn and filler phases, but keep in mind that any time you enter a burn phase, whether that's with arcane power or just a mini burn, you'll always want to be within range of your target based on your haste value. Once again, I have a weak R in the description that helps with it, so please, please go import it and really use it as if it's part of your rotation. Now let's get into the rotation. 15 seconds before the pull starts, you want to be spamming Arcane Explosion to fish for a clearcasting proc. You want to keep using Arcane Explosion until you either get a clearcasting proc, or there's 8 seconds left until the pull starts. At 8 seconds, you want to sit down and eat mage food to replenish mana. Then. 3 seconds before the pull, you want to cast Rune of Power into an Arcane Blast precast. The pull has now begun, and we're going to begin our opener. Spam Arcane Missiles until you have 18 stacks of Arcane Harmony, then cast Radiant Spark into Touch of the Magi into Arcane Power. We're then going to cast 4 Arcane Blasts, and the 5th Arcane Blast is going to have an Arcane Barrage spell queued into it. If you're not sure what it means to spell queue, basically on that 5th Arcane Blast cast, you want to be spam clicking your Arcane Barrage Keybind so that both spells get sent out at the same time, and this will cause both your Arcane Blast and Arcane Barrage to benefit from that last fully empowered stack of Radiant Spark. 
After casting that Arcane Barrage, you're now at 0 stacks of Arcane Harmony and 0 Arcane Charges. So you want to shoot out an Arcane Orb, cast Presence of Mind into 3 Arcane Blasts, then spam Arcane Missiles until you have 18 stacks of Arcane Harmony, and then finish off the burn with one final Arcane Barrage. Now while we wait for Rune of Power, Radiant Spark, and Touch of the Magi to come back off cooldown, we'll be moving into our filler rotation. Our filler rotation will consist of building up 18 stacks of Arcane Harmony and dumping with Arcane Barrage at 4 Arcane Charges. However, there are some rules you need to follow. You never want to cast Arcane Barrage unless you have both 15 to 18 stacks of Arcane Harmony and 4 Arcane Charges. You also never want to hardcast Arcane Blast unless you have 2 or more Arcane Charges. This means that your filler rotation will follow a simple priority list. Arcane Barrage when you have both 18 stacks of Arcane Harmony and 4 Arcane Charges. Arcane Orb when you have 0 Arcane Charges. Arcane Blast when you have at least 2 Arcane Charges. And lastly, cast Arcane Missiles. Once Rune of Power, Radiant Spark, and Touch of the Magi are back off cooldown, you can enter your mini burn phase. Make sure you have 18 stacks of Arcane Harmony ready, cast Rune of Power, Radiant Spark, Touch of the Magi, 4 Arcane Blasts, and a 5th Arcane Blast spell queued with Arcane Barrage. From here, you can enter back into your filler rotation until Radiant Spark, Touch of the Magi, and Arcane Power are back off cooldown, and the rotation repeats itself from the Arcane Power burn stage. Here's a quick 3 minute segment of me performing the rotation on a training dummy. I'm currently in pre-pull, so I'm fishing for clear casting procs. Once I get one or the timer hits 8 seconds, I immediately sit down to regen my mana before the pull. At 3 seconds, I cast Rune of Power into a precast Arcane Blast and start stacking Arcane Harmony to 18. Once I hit 18, I'm now in the Arcane Power burn phase and I begin that rotation. At this point I'm no longer in the burn phase and I'm now performing the filler rotation and following the filler priority. Rune of Power, Radiant Spark, and Touch of the Magi are about to be off cooldown. I make sure I have 18 stacks of Arcane Harmony and I begin the mini burn rotation. That's the mini burn and now I go back into performing the filler rotation. Radiant Spark, Touch of the Magi, and Arcane Power are about to be off cooldown again, and the rotation is pretty much reset to how it started on pull. Now let's head into the AoE portion of the guide. 
we want to begin using the AOE rotation when we reach 3 targets without cooldowns or 4 targets with cooldowns. Keep in mind that in Mythic Plus, you want to end every pull at 18 stacks of Arcane Harmony, so you can immediately enter a burn phase on the next pull. So here's the burn rotation assuming you already have 18 stacks of Arcane Harmony. Depending on if Arcane Power is up or not, you'll do the AP burn or the mini burn rotation. Either one will then be followed by two Arcane Explosions, Arcane Barrage, Arcane Orb, and Arcane Barrage. Alternatively, if you want more priority damage, you can cast Arcane Blast after Orb, and cue the second Arcane Barrage into it. When your burn is over, the filler rotation for AoE is going to be using Arcane Explosion to build Arcane Charges, and using Arcane Barrage to dump at 4 charges. If you get a clear casting proc, you want to spend it on Arcane Missiles unless you're at 8 or more targets, in which you then just use the proc on Arcane Explosion and continue dumping Arcane Barrage at 4 charges. Here's a quick 2 minute clip of me doing the AoE burn and filler rotation on a group of training dummies. Keep in mind that in this clip I'm getting multiple burns out, but in a Mythic Plus scenario you'll mostly be alternating between the Arcane Power burn and Mini burn between packs. Alright, the bulk of the guide is now over, so let's head into some frequently asked questions. Number 1, when should I be using Frostbolt or Fire Blast? So you only want to use Frostbolt if you're low on mana and are about to enter a burn phase soon. For example, let's say Touch of the Magi is 5 seconds away from being off cooldown and you're at 40% mana. You don't want to use Arcane Missiles or Arcane Blast here because you risk having too little mana for your burn, so the best play here is to use Frostbolt to continue doing some DPS while you buy time for your cooldowns to come back up. As for Fire Blast, this is a great spell to throw out on the move if you don't have any clear casting procs. You can also use it as a quick way to stack up Radiant Spark if, for example, you have to dodge a Swirly on the floor. Fire Blast can fill up that global so you can continue with your Radiant Spark ramp. You can actually do the same thing here with Presence of Mind. If you're going to do an Arcane Power Burn and know you have to move, you can pop Presence of Mind to continue stacking Radiant Spark with Arcane Blast. Keep in mind, however, that you only want to use Presence of Mind this way when you're at 0 or 1 stacks of Radiant Spark. Anything more than that and you won't be able to spell queue the last arcane barrage into that 5th arcane blast, since it'll be an instant cast. Number 2, is soul letting ruby still good even with the arcane prodigy conduit? Yes it's worth it. Just make sure you aren't holding onto arcane power for it. You end up using it like a 3 minute trinket and pop it on every other arcane power burn. Alright guys, that's pretty much it. I know this was a long video, but if you made it this far, I hope you learned something new. I tried to make sure I didn't miss anything, but if you think I did, please ask any questions down below. I'm very active in the comments and try to reply to as many questions as possible. So yeah, if you guys found the video informative, please hit the like and subscribe button. It not only supports the channel, but it's really encouraging on my end, and it lets me know what kind of content you guys want to see. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.